Chicago do ask why a city with an abundance of water, it's the largest metropolitan center on the, literally on the shores of one of the greatest bodies of fresh water in the world, would also team up with a country known for their scarcity, but also for their innovation. It brings a different perspective in that effort, uh, but it was my decision uh, as mayor, actually going back to something Elad mentioned, when I was chief of staff for President Obama, I, said, I sat down with an economist who showed me originally a map of all the civil wars and all the uh, battles that were happening between countries. Then he showed me a map of all the drought in the world. And the truth of the matter is, if you didn't know, you were looking basically at the same map. And when I became mayor, I wanted to make sure the city of Chicago, like Israel, looked at its scarcity and said, okay, that's an inspiration for its innovation. What was it that Chicago had that could bring to this discussion and position the city, a global city, a city that made, for my family 100 years ago, its home, that positioned Chicago to be a world leader like it has consistently been in technology, but to be a world leader in a subject that was only become more prominent. Now, in my view, that in the last 40 years of geopolitics, energy was a driving force. There is no doubt that the future commodity that will be a driving force that will change politics, change the economy, and as both economic sustainability and environmental sustainability merge, water was gonna be that commodity. And therefore, I had as a responsibility as a decision as mayor how to best position the city of Chicago, because I firmly believe the decisions we make in the next two to three years will determine what our respective areas, and for me, the city of Chicago, will look like in the next 20 to 30 years. So we've embarked on a number of things and partnered, and four years ago, Israeli companies, Israeli universities, met in Chicago to deal with the issue of water, water management, water innovation, and they begin the process of merging those uh, areas from two different perspectives. One, a scarcity, which defines Israel, and one of abundance, which is defined Chicago. So we've done a couple things in the city of Chicago to prepare ourselves for the future, and not just prepare the people of the city uh, of Chicago for the future, but to take advantage to advance our economic interest, job creation, but to do it in a sustainable and environmentally sensitive way. First and foremost, we've embarked uh, in America on one of the largest water infrastructure investments in America. Every pipe in the city of Chicago that's 100 years or older which is 1,000 miles, will be totally replaced. 700 miles of sewer, totally replaced. 167,000 catch basins, re rebuilt. We have the two largest water treatment facilities and wastewater treatment facilities, rebuilt and reconstructed. $7 billion capitalization, putting over 18,000 people in a decade to work rebuilding that infrastructure. When we are done, which will be in about four years, will, on a single year, save two years worth of uh, residential water usage that we used to lose through pipes. A better management, and therefore, through that investment, also gaining the technology and the knowledge that will help us become a leader in better water management. Second, the city of Chicago is home to more universities in America than any other city except for Boston. And with the delegation that we brought here to Israel, Every university, one of all, not every, but almost all the universities are represented, bringing the heads of their departments in water research. We had a meeting yesterday with the representatives of the universities across uh, the state of Israel. I will say one thing about the conference. There's a little joke about Henry Kissinger when he was asked when he first joined the Nixon administration, which is, are you really sure that you're prepared for the politics of Washington? And he said, have you seen the politics of academia? And therefore, I will just say to you in that meeting yesterday, I have confidence we can get peace here in the Mideast. Uh, we brought all the, we had to, to bring all the universities in Chicago together, we had to make a trip to Israel. <laughs> Sometimes I joke that we were gonna bring together here the heartland of America with the Holy Land. We're gonna bring both the Mideast and the Midwest together and our view of abundance with your view of scarcity and hopefully something beautiful will come with that. 
And the effort also was then the third piece of that investment was not just our universities in collaboration with partners here in Israel University, research centers to research centers. Four years ago, between Ben Gurion University and University of Chicago, they started a joint project. We already have one commercial product out of that, and numerous papers have already been published. Now we're bringing every university to that aspect with every university in Israel. We created an innovation space called Current, which is just for new water companies, whether it's on infrastructure, AI, cybersecurity, delivery of services, innovation, conversion of brown water into fresh water. On every aspect, I want the city of Chicago to be a leader in thinking through the ecosystem of a world of scarcity to a world of abundance and sustainability. And I want the city of Chicago to be that leader. We took as a city a look at what we have and what we want to become. And then made that and invested in, whether it was on the academic side or the operational side, infrastructure side, I decided we were going to double down on those assets to make them into real global leaders. And make sure that the city of Chicago, which really, when you think about it, does not really have a problem on water and access. Our utility provides water basically to 11 million people. But we have an ability to know, know how to scale in a way that nobody else does. And therefore, that is a strength, not a vulnerability. Yes, the scarcity in Israel led to innovation. But in the end of the day, whether you're from a small country or a, a metropolitan world-class city, you have to figure out how to scale your capacity to the people that you're responsible to. And so today, I want to thank everybody for, uh, at least I can go home in synagogue on the holy days. And at least I was in Israel, so maybe I get a blessing from the rabbi. <laughs> I don't have to listen to the sermon, maybe all of Yom Kippur, that will be a blessing also. <laughs> but on a serious note, what this does provide is an opportunity to continue to position my city that I'm responsible for, not just in the 10 year that I have, but to lay a foundation economically, academically, also in this area of service, to then prepare the city of Chicago to continue to be a global leader that creates jobs, opportunity, and provides services. And then everybody from my delegation knows this, but I also want to say this on the level here, is that we, while we talk on water, I happen to also think one of the most important things that we can do as mayors, and there is a growing, obviously, you know, if you project over the next 20 years, 60 plus percent of the world will live in cities. Today, the biggest challenge going forward, well, how to create that economic growth, not just in a sustainable way, but inclusive economic growth rather than exclusive economic growth. One of the challenges of technology is while it's a great enabler of solving problems, the economic opportunity it creates is limited rather than inclusive. And if you look around the world where you see technology, it does able to solve problems that it addresses, but it does not do it in a way where everybody gets to participate in the opportunities it creates. One of my hopes here, and I say this early on and I said at one point, when it came to the investment in infrastructure in our water project, we are creating 18,000 construction jobs of people who are building the water pipe, laying the water pipe, rebuilding the water infrastructure, redoing the sewer system. It is providing not just the technology, not only the capacity, but creating jobs and economic opportunity that are sustainable and creating a middle class life where you can also raise your children and send them on to college and to other life. That is what I call inclusive economic growth. Where people on the outside are not looking in, but they're on the inside participating in a huge opportunity. And the challenge for all of us who believe not only in innovation but in technology is how to create it in a way where everybody gets a chance to participate and not a limited few. So the scarcity of water, climate change, there are Americans who still believe in it. <laughs> You're a little slow this morning, but uh, you'll catch up. <laughs> but it take, it doesn't translate that well, but you got it after a while. <laughs> but to take what is happening and all of us can see, today the issue of water accessibility that is on the periphery, we all know in this room that it will become front and center 
in many places that front and center is today. It is not true that it's today for Chicago. But my job as mayor of the city of Chicago is to take what's on the periphery, make it front and center, and it becomes an economic opportunity of sustainability and environmental responsibility that we best prepare our city, the people of the city of Chicago, to make the most of that future. And not only make the most of that future, but they make it the most of that future for the most people in the city of Chicago. Thank you.